Hey everyone, Daniel from Twin Bytes with another tutorial for you, and this time I'm going to show you how to use File Explorer in Windows 11. It's very similar to previous versions of Windows, but there's some cosmetic changes and some extra features. So let's look at it. First of all, I got one open here right now, and any folder that you're in is a File Explorer. So you could be inside a new folder here, it's, it's a File Explorer window. And you can get to any folder from any folder, really. Once you're in one, there's shortcuts on the side that will at least have your documents, pictures, music, videos, and your desktop. You'll also have your C drive, and then any other drives that you have connected, and shortcuts to folders that you have pinned. If you have any folders, for example, the sample folder that you want to have over here as a shortcut in your quick access menu you can right click on that folder and you'll see an option here to pin to the quick access once you select that you'll see that it shows up over here you can even rearrange these folders anywhere you want you'll see that it either highlights a folder which will put it as a subfolder or it'll put it in between if you have the line showing in between them and you can put them right there so it gives you a way of accessing that folder quickly or you could right click in it if you want to get rid of it and then unpin from the quick access and it's gone just as easily you can also access File Explorer from the taskbar down at the bottom here, or if you go through your Start button, there's File Explorer again. And if you have any shortcut, as I said earlier, on your desktop to any location, you can open that, and this window looks the same every single time. So once you're in this window, let's look at the options. Over on the top left, there's New, click that, there's a drop-down menu to create a new folder. And if you create a folder, and you already had a new folder, you can see that it's creating new folder with the number two in brackets because you can't have two folders with the same name. Same thing with file names. So it's automatically adding a digit to the end, and if I was to do it again, it's gonna add one with a three, and it'll just keep going. So you have the opportunity to type in a new name while it's highlighted blue, or you can just leave it like that. If we go up to new again, there's shortcut. And here you can browse and add a shortcut to any folder or file that's in this list. So you would just browse to something. Maybe we want to add a shortcut to the C drive and it shows the path there and we'll just hit next you can give it a unique name or just keep what's there hit finish and now we have a shortcut to the C drive within this folder going back up to new you'll see that you have a list of different programs that you can create a uh, icon for it wouldn't be a shortcut it's a actual program so you could create a new access database so instead of going into that program, or let's talk about Word, maybe makes more sense to most people, you could go to Word on your computer, open it up, type a document, and save it in that folder. But what if you just want to create a folder there right now? You have no idea what you're going to type in it yet, so we'll just click that. We've got a new Word document, and this will be figured out later so maybe we don't know what we want to type in there yet but I do want that as a reminder that I'm gonna create a word document in here for something and that will at least be there as a placeholder so you can create an icon for any program and your list will be different than mine depending on what programs you have installed on your computer Moving along, there's a bunch of icons up here that are grayed out right now, and that's because nothing's highlighted. So if I was to highlight something here, you can see that there's a pair of scissors. If I highlight that, it says cut. So they all have tool tips over each one of them. If I hit that, it goes kind of grayed out a bit like a ghost. So then I can go somewhere else on my computer, maybe inside this folder, and I can right click and paste. Or I could have even just hit the uh, button up there to paste, which uh, you can see here. Actually, that's copy, so we'll do a copy. And when I click off somewhere else, the 
options to cut and copy are grayed out now because nothing is highlighted but we do have the option to paste now and there's the folder that we just cut from the other folder so it's gone from this folder and it's inside this other one you can also rename if you just highlight something you can hit this here and again it gives you the tool tip if you want to delete something there's the trash can that's already lit up so that's gone and then what if you have something that you want to share you'll see this is a share button but you can't share a folder you can share a file though so if you highlight again it says share we'll click on that and you can share it to a contact if you're making use of the Windows contacts they'll show up in there or if you have any devices nearby and you can choose devices that belong to you or devices that belong to anyone that it finds within range so you want to be careful with that and just keep it turned off if you're not sure there's also a way to share it by email but this only uses the built-in mail program so if you're not using the Windows Mail program in your computer maybe you're using Gmail or Outlook or some other program this won't work so if you want to share it by email you're gonna to have to do it a different way and probably just open up your email and attach it as an attachment now we have other options here where you can sort the list and you can sort it by any of the columns that are showing here name date type and then there's more so there's name date type and a few more things and you can even add and remove columns so this gives you a few if the option isn't in the list you can click on the heading here and it will sort it by that and if you click it again it sorts the opposite way it doesn't quite make as much sense with this list because it's a small list but uh, you can kind of see it move around if I choose by the name or the date also under sort there's group by so if you want to you can group it and it will make more sense when you have a larger list and it will categorize it by names or at least in alphabetical order kind of like a file cabinet if you go into group by you can say group by name there is group by date so it shows what's today and earlier this week and you've got all these different ways of grouping but I don't like grouping I'm gonna select none and it's back to just one full list that I can have sorted any which way I want here under view you can choose from different icon sizes so from absolutely enormous all the way down to small icons or you can go into list format which is what I had a lot of times it's handy to go to details so then you can look at it uh, this way and see the date in that and actually this is the format I did have you have tiles if you prefer seeing it that way you can go to content view and that gives you another kind of a layout so whatever you like you can even if we go to maybe details here there's compact view is turned on if I turn that off you'll see there's big gaps in between everything here and even over on the left I don't like that I like to keep everything tight so I'm gonna click compact view on you can see it immediately tightens it all up you also have more options to show like the navigation pane which is on the far left here if we turn that off you'll see that disappears I like having my navigation pane so I'm gonna turn that back on and then there's also a details pane which I find gets in the way but if you highlight any file it will give you a little uh, bit of information about that file go to preview pane and now this will give you a preview of the content that is within that file so without opening it it tells you a little bit what it is so we could look at a word document here and see if there's anything in it and it doesn't seem to be anything in that file but we do have something in this text file now there's item checkboxes which I find is kind of stupid like you could 
uh, turn these things on and it it's allows you to select more than one file which you could do that through another method like just holding down the control key on your keyboard and clicking on each one but if you're not sure about doing that and you prefer having check boxes then you can select individual files like that file name extensions I have it turned on right now so if we make this bigger you can sh see it shows pptx for PowerPoint docx for documents in Word and txt for uh, text file and if we go back in here and uncheck that it doesn't show the file name extension so it takes up less room it's cleaner usually you can tell by the look of the icon what it is and if you have details view on you can see what the document type is here as well I like having the extensions on it's good security practice that I started a long time ago so that way you can tell for example if we were to look at this text file and I'm gonna rename that so now it's we can see it's .txt .bat. it's a batch file I could run a virus in this thing so I'm going to uncheck that so it doesn't show the extensions but this one looks like it's showing the extension it shows it's txt so you would think that's a text file but it's not really we can even tell by the icon and the name in the type it says it's a batch file not a text file that's why I like to show the file name extensions and that way I can see it truly is a bat file not a txt file anyway that's just a little bonus tip for you there on security and then there's hidden items so if you have anything marked as hidden let's look at this for example we'll go in the properties and there's an option here to hide the file so if we were to have that hidden it's kind of grayed out if it's visible right now it's completely gone so if I turn this on now it's showing the hidden file and it's kind of gray that's all the view options in the three dots you've got a few more things you can undo the last action you did compress a file or a group of files to a zip file you can copy the path which is the location of where that file is and then paste that path into another Explorer window or into a document if you're making notes about it or sending an email with the path you can select all the files which is convenient or if you have something selected and we go to invert selection it'll select everything except the one that was selected and then there's also select none and that just takes the highlight off of everything which you could also easily do by just clicking somewhere else there's the properties which give you the properties of that particular file or folder that you have highlighted and then there's options and that gets into a lot more stuff that we can maybe do in a different video if you're interested in seeing that just let me know in the comments below if you want to dive deeper into file explorer and the folder options that's the top menu bar you may have also noticed that when I right clicked here before there's options and a lot of them are the same as what we saw earlier here's all the view options the sort options the group by options and you've got uh, many other options in here that we've already seen there's a new one here open in terminal so that wasn't there if you right click on an actual file it gives you the same tool tips like we had up at the top here for the cut copy rename share and delete you've got other options where you can open the file using its program that's associated with it or choose a different program that you have installed on your computer you can also add it into your favorites bar and again you've got these same options like we had previously what you'll also notice at the very bottom is show more options you might find yourself using that more where other features 
and options will be available through here only. So there's zip files and advanced options for zipping. You've got to scan for viruses using whatever virus scanner you have installed. Uh, backups if you have an online backup program and your list will be different than mine depending on what programs that you have installed even restoring previous versions it's got quite a few different things in here that you'll find that you wouldn't have had just by right clicking and that's it for this tech tutorial i hope you did find it helpful if you did please do give it a thumbs up consider subscribing even better give it a super thanks and thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one bye for now